In this video, we're going to take a look at adding and subtracting functions. So here's really the background information that we need to know to do this. Do you know what 2 plus 3 is? I hope so. Do you know what 6 minus 4 is? Yep. Do you know what negative 3 minus minus 5 is? Oop, got to be a bit careful with the signs here. This is like negative 3 plus 5. Okay, minus 2. So when we're going to look at adding and subtracting functions, we're just going to do a lot of adding and subtracting different numbers just like this. So if you can do this sort of stuff, we'll have no problem adding or subtracting functions. Okay, I've drawn two graphs here. I've got a red function here, which is f of x, and I've got a blue function here, which is g of x. And let's just say each one of these little grid squares here represents one unit on x and one unit on y. And what I'm actually interested in finding is a new function that I'm going to call h of x, and that's going to be the f function plus the g function. Okay, so I'm going to graph a new function h of x, which is going to be the f function, that's this one here, plus, plus this g function. And I'll do this function in, let's say, green. Well, it's like you'd imagine. If I'm going to find a new function that's adding the f and the g function together, let's start, uh, let's start right here. So the f function, so right here at minus 2, here, oh, sorry, here's f function down here. f is minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the y value here is minus 6. Here the y value is 1, 2, 3, 4. So h of minus 2 at my h function, I'm going to take f of minus 2 and add g of minus 2. So f of minus 2 is negative 6. So this question is really, what is negative 6 plus 4? Negative 6 plus 4 would be negative 2. So this will be my point on my new function, which is 8 of x. So y value here negative 6, negative 6, y value here positive 4, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So this will be my, my new y value on h of x. I could move along here to another point. Let's say we do this one here, negative 1. Well, f of negative 1 is 1, 2, 3, negative 4, plus y value here is 3, and negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And I could continue to do this. I could move on to this next point. Here it's negative 2. Here it's positive 2. Add them together, get 0. I could skip to, let's say, this point here. Here we have f is 2, g is 0. 2 plus 0 is 2. Um, let's skip up here. Here we have an x, a y value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here we have a y value of negative 2. So if I'm, if I'm finding h of x, which is adding the two functions together, 6 plus negative 2 is 4. And I've got enough points here to see that this graph is going to carry on in a straight line as well. So this would be my new function at, at h of x. So really, if we want to find a new function h of x, which is just adding the two functions together, we just need to take some points and add their y values, and whatever new points we get, that will be our new function. Here's another example. So I've got a red graph here that is f of x. I've got a black graph here that is g of x, and I want to find a new function h of x, which is f of x plus g of x. Now another way we can write this, and you may see this written like this sometimes, is f plus g of x. That's so saying the same thing, it's just a different notation. We're going to add the f function with the g function. Now this one, the last example up here, here are these graphs went on forever. So sorry, the red graph here, f of x went down forever, up forever, left forever, right forever on the g function. So same thing there with our h function, but look at this one. Here, this graph ends here and ends here, and the g function starts here and ends here. 
So if I'm going to add the f function with the g function, and let's say I start at this point right here, which is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so an x value of negative 5 here. Here there's a y value of negative 3. There is no g function that we can add the f to. So I can't make a function h of x here at negative 5. It's not until the domain both show up in both functions here at minus 3 where I can actually add the two values together. So right here we have a y value of negative 1, and here we have a y value of 3. So my first x value will start at negative 3 from the left, and that'll be f of x, negative 1, plus the g function, which is 3, and negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So here's where my h, h function's going to start. And then like before, we would simply add these two values. So here at 0, 0 plus 2 is 2. Here, uh, ooh, 1, 1 plus 1, oh, that's still 2. Here, 2 plus 0, 2. 1 plus 1, 2. So, so far, we're just zooming along here at 2. Here, though, we have a y value of 2 and a y value of 1. So 2 plus 1 is going to be 3 now. And here, 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. So it'll come up here, done this. And now I run into the problem where here at my next point, if I'm trying to add g with the f function, I don't have an f function to add. So this graph's going to end right here because I don't have both functions to add y values to anymore. So this graph h of x would look like this here. So again, same concept here. We're adding adding uh, the y value here to the y value here and producing a y value. But the domain, so the domain of f here was from negative 5, from negative 5 all the way to 3. Uh, let's go back to the black function. So the domain of g, g started at negative 3 and went as far as 5. So the domain of my function h, which was adding those two functions together, it's going to start at negative 3 and go as far as positive 3, because that's where the domains of these two functions overlap. So just remember that. The domain of the function, the new function that we get when we add our two functions together, must be where the domain of both of the functions that we're adding exist. Let's look at another example. So in this example, uh, a rad graph here, f of x which looks kind of like the absolute value function, except I ended it there. And uh, I've got a blue function here, g of x, which looks a little bit like the square root function. And we're going to find h of x. Now, this time, h of x, we're going to do f of x minus g of x. Or another way of writing that is f minus g of x. So there's nothing different here, except we'll be doing some subtracting instead of adding. So I'm going to start from the left. I've got some values here of g of x, but I have no f of x. So I can't start until this point right here, which is at negative 4. So here's where the domain of h of x is going to start. And that's at minus 4. So if I take f of x, that looks like a y value of 3. Take away g of x, which is also a y value of 3. So we're going to start here at 0. Now, this is, we can do some other points here, like we could pick this one here. So let's say at minus 2, what would h of minus 2 be? Um, f of x is easy to do, that's a y value of 1. But we're going to have to approximate this one here. So g of x from my graph looks like it's about maybe 2.7, approximately. So when h is, or when x is minus 2, I would get 1 minus 2.7, which is negative 1.7. So it's going to be down about here somewhere. And we could do some other approximations. We could 
we could look at approximately what is what's h going to be when x is minus 1 so f is 0 and now we're maybe 2.5 here so negative two and a half but here's where we're going to get our next next clear point and that's when x is 1 so when x is 1 we have f, f being minus 2 and we're going to subtract a y value here of positive 2 so now we're down at negative 4 1, 2, 3, 4 so let's look at something like this here now when h is uh, let's do 2 sorry when x is 2 when x is 2 f is minus 1 subtract maybe we have 1.8 here approximately so now we're at negative 2.8 negative 1 negative 2.8 so our graph so far has been coming down like this and now it's going to start start coming up and then here we've got another point one two three four so next is four f which is one minus g which is one gives us zero and the last point we can do is this one right here when eight when x is five one two three four five because if we go past here we're going to lose our g function it doesn't exist so when x is 5 f is 2 minus g is 0 just remember to do f minus g all the time sometimes you know the graphs you know change the here that we had the the blue function on top of the red one well, now we have the red on top of the blue so just just be sure when you're doing your subtraction that it's always f take away g so f was 2 take away 0 is 2 we'd have something a curve a rough curve sketch that looks like this and now we can easily find our domain the domain of this function goes from negative 4 up to 1 2 3 4 5 and we can also find our range now from our graph it goes as low as minus 1 2 3 4 and goes as high as a y value of 2. So that's all there is to adding and subtracting functions. It's just a matter of adding and subtracting two values on the function. Say this first one represented f and this, this second represented g, then these values over here would represent h.